my name is Zachary Wynn. I'm a partner success director um, in um, out of our London office. Um, mostly I look after our airlines in the Middle East, Africa, a little bit of Eastern Europe, all over the place. I've been at ATP Co for a very long time at this point, um, doing lots of different things that will all of the ideas of how we can really partner with our airlines and our sales channels to make all the things that we've been talking about over the next two days happen. So, oh, sorry. Sure. No. You have yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> oh, I have to read the disclaimer. You have so, to read it. Yes, I do. Okay. Some lawyers say I do. So okay. this is just, Disclaimer, this doesn't become the process standard of the very long of the airline industry distribution interpretation of the other predictive be more accurate, not inefficient. Themselves in America, but this means industry wide pro kind of mission. We must not engage in kind of disease of violation of interest laws, but the laws around the world. Accordingly, this means we will not take action regarding any fair rule or fee, nor will we discuss or take action on the relation levels of any intermediate institution sale of American patients. Meaning, I'll have no authority to discuss or reach agreement on the allocation of markets and vision sharing of traffic revenue users. Or the number of flights that be offered in the market. Discussion of various matters concerning any competitive topics that are on the floor or off are should be granted. Discussing the regional agreement to these topics could expose any concerns to liability under US antitrust laws or other laws of the United States or around the world. Further, this conscience of this means not interpreted in the request for disputes or paper communications concerning the content over social media or other public platforms. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's done. <laughs> That's impressive. Yeah. My first time having to say this. This is so much more fun than over Zoom. Over Zoom, it just is really awkward. But this is much nicer. Um, but yeah, one in working with airlines all over all over the world, one thing that we we see is when we go to conferences, we go to other industry events. It's a lot of information. It's a lot of vision, you know, what are we doing in the future? How are we getting dynamic offers to scale? Where, what, how do we get in, throw in, and see from the 10 to 20% we have to do to 80%? It's a lot. So, more specifically, where do you get started as an airline? And this is really what, it's, what the session is all about, is to say, let's take all of those kind of the concepts we've, we've discussed, we've heard about so far from the different speakers. What can you take back to your organization? For yourself, which you can work with your partner airlines or other folks on as well in the industry ecosystem to do. So, when we structure we our our partnership agreement with airlines, which we've done quite an overhaul of over the past few years, it's really made it more about how do we enable these things to happen. So, it used to be okay. You have an agreement with ATP Go that allows you to do some things. Primarily, it was GDS distribution that was the thought and the use case. Um, that hasn't been the case in a number of years. We've really expanded to do a lot more and really to enable all the things that we've talked about today. Um, we talk about what do you do to get going? We say, we we'll just we'll start. I think the message I want to say, especially today, that we heard in the very first session from Richard Clark and um, uh, our colleagues from McKinsey, as well as our CEO, Alex Hoffman, said, we need to start. It doesn't matter what it is, just to do the next thing. We need to get going. And make it happen. Uh, so let's start with retailing. Mm -hmm. And retailing, of course, we're happy to love the product. I worked on that product for a number of years and had a lot of fantastic stories. What we say is that our community of almost 500 airlines, everybody can start retailing it today. Yeah. And start retailing and loading parent foods and branded fares and getting that information to as many places as possible. We can talk about that. Analysis can be done in the tools that each people provide today. We have there's a large of solution of all these people architect. In addition, there's a lot of other things that just exist that all of our community participation, participation members have access to. Um, and then dynamic pricing started and transforming. It's a long journey, a lot of systems and ideas involved. How do we get going? What are the first steps we can take to make that a reality? What are airlines starting to do? What have we found in the work that we've done with the community of almost 500 airlines over the last few years? To really get going on what he's looking for. So that's the, 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 the call to action. The thing that I really would like you all to take away from this is let's start let's, let's start doing this today because you know, we're people, we don't want to be left behind as an industry. We don't want to be left behind as respectable organizations. We really want to make the most of um, the partnerships that we have. Their attributes are the foundation. Of course, we have the visual displays powered by Root Happy. But underneath, and what is powering the capital as well as many other sales channels around the world, 
of dark therapy. It's not about saying brand affairs. Now that is that is the name of the system within an HP code where the data lives. The more important thing is how do we express that in a way that a customer can see it. So what we did when we acquired Recap is to take that technology that will look across the different systems within an HP code, but especially brand affairs, and translate that data into something a passenger can understand in up to 28 languages, by the way. So we have a display in English here, but if I were pressing the display in German or in Arabic or in um, traditional Chinese, it would show up here as well, automatically, reflecting exactly what is created within a Pico. This is an example of Kayak, but yeah, I can pick many other channels, so GDS, we have Meta, we have the OTAs using us now, um, really to start driving people to the different places where they can buy more products. Um, and this is so important because it seems like such a basic thing about retail, but particularly when you look outside of the markets that you heavily serve or like where you're well known, in other places, well, you know, you, I know a lot of airline products that they work in this business and I've been able to travel around the world, but it's really hard to see that other places. How do you tell people? One part of our value proposition is seating Southwest Airlines. <laughs> because as a key value product, as a key driver in that. Or is it the is it the luggage allowance? What is it that drives people to do this? Putting that information is that information in the ATP though is what we do. That is the core of our business, and that's what the agreement of the participation really unlocks. The ability to put this information out there and scale it. It can be in a branded or a, a fair family type display like we have here. But even if it's not, or it's just a dynamically created bundle, or there is no brand. The same attributes get pulled in and are displayed in that way. We have a couple of different ways this is done here. Um, for this example I really like because you have the visuals, but then more importantly, you have all these rules and allowances. That's coming off of the core data in, and that is expressed uh, from these content and brand affairs, and then going out there and doing the best of the industry. I love what Expedia has done now. They've touched on this a little bit, where they have attribute based shopping. That seat choice included, that seat data comes from ATP for brand affairs directly. If that data is not coded, it will not show up. And I have some, my partner airlines have said, why, why is Expedia showing these very expensive things when I click it? I said, because you have a load of brand affairs. Or more importantly, you have opened your brand affair program to Expedia, which is a really, uh, really important point. The other example I like on this slide is, is American Airlines and their um, and their agency bundles. So new interesting offers that are unique to a distribution channel can also be loaded in. For us, we're an industry neutral provider. Our job is to just get the best data out there and make it accurate to describe your product, yet also coming off of all things that keep people brand affairs. But a really important point is to ensure that those brand programs are open. Um, what it, and I say this because when, when this was invented, um, a number of years ago, it was really done on a system by system implementation. So we'd have one seller who wanted to get their actual information from an airline, we'd send it to that seller, we'd send it to that seller, we would do all, we would track all of that with the ATP data structures. Now, passages come from everywhere. It's important to have an ability to showcase your product at a high level so people can know where to go and see it. And that's, that to me is really, really important. Um, so and we've done that work. So for example, with um, you know a couple of different airlines this year, we've been able to unlock that, opening them up, so that when someone is searching on Google, which is one out of every ten searches even for air travel starts with Google, I think it's a statistic. They type it in. There it is. Those are attributes correctly shown. They want to go to Skyscanner or their favorite Meta to start. Boom! It's the correct attributes that are being showcased or an OTA. Or if a travel agent is searching for something in their desktop, we'll see the same thing. All of this stuff is important, but it's important to have it open so that everyone can access this. Okay. Questions so far? So that's all driven through branded phase. All the back is 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 driven through branded phase. Yes. Some of the the baggage allowance is coming off of our baggage database. But um, the other actions, especially the seats, very important. And again, the indicator on seats is just whether or not there's, there's purchasing or 
it's free or not included. Then you drive down, and of course, there's the ancillaries that go along with it, which is too much to display at an initial time of flight shopping, but of course, there is that robust set of data in the background. And there's now feedback. <laughs> And he's the automation of pricing decisions, which is that we give every airline that works with ATP Co a baseline of, of, of a tool to look at what's going on in the marketplace. This is done in the market view. Um, if you, you've heard a bit about ATP Co Architect, a very large system, a very robust system, this is, this is actually part of that whole journey in terms of fair management. How do you take information that is out there in the marketplace so you can make better decisions? How do you query what's going on with your competition? And, and, or how do you look at your own data? How do you look at your own benchmarks? What, do, what products do I have on the shelf right now when you're doing inventory? It's amazing how many airlines actually have them do that and look at their own data and say, okay, what's, what, what do I have out there? Why? What's going on? Um, and many years working with airlines on site, they would tell me, yeah, we spend a lot of time chasing our own problems or for, oh, we forgot we had that fare out there in the market selling. This is a great way to audit and do this. And we include all pieces of the fare that are necessary. So not just the base fare, but the surcharge, the carrier imposed YP fee, um, and all the taxes as well. So we can really create that full picture of yourselves and any other public data from any of your competitors available in the single click and again included. Um, for a certain number of queries per month um, as part of the community participation. Every time we send changes to the market, yeah. we send it from one of our servers to another. So it's always, okay. it should always reflect, okay. it's actually reflects faster than GDSs. No, we're, we're, we're weak kill, never mind. Reflects faster than <laughs> GDSs. Um, which is really, uh, well, of course, they're dealing with much larger daily volumes. And again, we're sending it from one server to oneself. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's always the most accurate picture of the market. Um, and actually, several airlines are using it as, that, as a check in their process to say, okay, I think I've done everything right. I have the offer where I need to be. Let me just run it again and see, oh, okay, yeah, it looks good and move on to the next thing. So. And of course, dynamic pricing. Massive, massive topic. So much that can be done. Many great providers in the space. You've heard from some of them over the last couple of days. We've seen what they can do. Um, the first question that I get from my partners often is, "Okay, I want to start, but how? It seems really hard, and I don't fully understand what it does or where it goes." And so, okay, you know, we, we thought about that, and we um, we shared a chart at the beginning of this morning session. As we're starting to move more and more airlines into this world, this is a way to do it. So, dual RBD was actually defined by the airline industry in the 1980s. It's been long for a very, very long time. Does it sound dynamic? No. But more importantly, it exists in all of the infrastructure that is needed to support the entire passenger journey. So flight shopping, ticketing, or order creation in the new world, reissue, refund, um, any kind of servicing, revenue accounting, and downline system, all of that can be done because we've built that infrastructure off of things that have existed for a long time. And the nice thing is it's no different than loading other fair and Google data within HTTP. It's the same infrastructure that's being used. So it's not a new system, it's things that you already have in your um, And there's a number of really great use cases that we've, that we've seen. So, um, for example, cabin upsell. Instant upgrades is how this has been often known that you can actually look into a higher cabin, but it can also be a higher brand, let's say if it's a single cabin aircraft or different things. You can actually utilize this information to do that. Um, Others are using it to have prices in the lockstep across brands. So you want to shift the market, shift the market, but you don't want what we call product inversion. You don't want your more flexible product to be pricing lower than your lighter, your lighter product. You can use this type of infrastructure to do just that. Um, 
And again, that same cabin would also be across different cabins. Again, you don't want that cabin inversion either. You don't want something that is very expensive for somehow pricing lower. Um, there's a lot of in the processes and things that I know airlines have to struggle with to keep all that in order. You make it very, very simple with this type of, of logic. Um, and ultimately, creating additional price lines. And that's really that step into dynamic pricing, saying how do we create more, um, how do we better segment, and how do we get closer to actual willingness to pay? And that happens through this railway to really get those additional items out there. I think in the past, we've shared a couple of uh, airline use cases where um, where this has happened, where you know, some airlines have created, gone beyond the traditional 26 classes that are available to 40 or 50. Um, and what they've really seen. Um, there's certain types of markers where this works better than others. We're all still learning in this journey. But again, this is a something that you can try immediately without having to invest in the system or go to procure it and try to decide and define what that future is going to be. It's really something that can begin from day one. And that's and I have an absolute power. Um, especially because this is, this is going to be a long journey for all of us. The learnings that we take from starting small, doing some tests, doing a couple of pilots, especially with existing infrastructure, really set the stage for the future. Um, not, when I put this together, I wasn't sure how many people we'd have in the room, but since we have a large crowd with, with lots of sales channels, um, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about what this means for um, our counterparts, um, for, for our sellers. Um, it's often to remind you know, folks that you know, we're really here to support all the entire use across the sales channels. We support and we, we value our relationship with our, with our friends in the GDSs, but we know it's a big world out there. How do we get great shopping content across different um, uh, programs? This is uh, Golfair, one of my partners in, um, in the Middle East. Um, that's actually we're having content that's on the like, Medicaid amenities that's also included in the participation agreement. This involves several different tech partners to make happen. They have a website provider, they have the GDF, they have a PSS in the background, and they also have another middle layer that does some things. We work with everybody because we know the shopping we do so we can work with everyone. Um, I, was on, I would be on calls. I live in Eastern Europe. Um, I would be on calls with their tech provider in Central Europe with, uh, of course, the airline based in Bahrain in the Middle East, um, as well as folks in, um, in their PSS provider in the United States. We would be doing these global calls to make all this happen, and it did. It's, it's, it's actually really, uh, it's a very compelling really image, and they've had very good success by doing this. So, um, that's an airline website that again, we worked to do, but we do this again with all of our sales channels partners. Um, we really you know, need to emphasize that as often as we can that that value is not just the traditional price availability, which is where it all starts, but it really goes on to all things that they're trying to do when you're enabling them to be creative. And um, finding ways to, to, to sell your product better. That's where we start. It's, 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 it's with these, with these very basic things. And of course, all the traditional infrastructure is still there, still loading the price, the, the price of the data that's for everything from regular sales, sale fairs, corporates, all those things. But talk to us, talk to HPGO, the age. Um, just the, the first step, of course, the first step has already been taken because we're all here. Um, or you're, and more importantly, you're all here at our conference, which is wonderful. And don't be afraid to try. I think this is the this is the biggest thing that I I I, 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 I stress to my airline partners, especially is you know, so much of this can be done. You try one OD, you try with just one cat, you do a little bit here and see what happens. You know, test. You know, it does. Especially because you already have access to it. There's no procurement, there's no contracting, it's all things that are there, and you can see what the results is. Um, I would say ask questions. And that's to everybody, um, especially at the UTP. Don't always ask us what's going on, what can we do? We're always willing to help. Ask questions to your industry partners, your tech providers, um, organizations like IATA, ARC, or all here today, um, and, the, and then continue to engage with the community. Again, your presence here is really part of that engagement, which I think is one of the great values of or why we call it a participation agreement, because um, this this type of engagement and this type of discussion is really what we want to continue to foster across the world. So um, this is how I think we're really going to be building that future of modern retailing. And the nice thing is that we already have the tools in our hands today to decide.
So, let's so join us. Let's do this. Any? Yes. Of course, you can, you can ask a question. So, back in the example where you um, mentioned that the brain of yours wasn't open to its video, that's the example. Yeah. Um, and you said uh, that that would be the response to it because it wasn't open. Yeah. How does an airline go about if they have limited that data to only certain? partnership channels to say I want it open to everyone now. What do they do? It's a great question. So you know, how do we actually create that openness within there? So we always say is every provider will have their own uh, requirements. And what we always say is you should have a cat if you speak in the in the technical HPCO terms, there should be a category um, unless otherwise specified sequence. Mm -hmm. precise. There should be something that says, okay, this is our baseline product. And I, I and, and I say it doesn't it doesn't have to be it's it's, it's easier to conceptualize if some, if your neighbor or a friend, someone who doesn't work with you in the airline business, says, hey, "If I'm going to fly with you, do I have to pay for seating?" What would you say? It's that kind of statement that you're putting out there. If you want to do more uh, more complicated types of things in terms of segmentation or differentiation by dis distribution, that, by the way, this doesn't override your distribution agreements. And that's a really important point that we put something in ATP that it doesn't override your participating carrier agreement with the GDS or another sales on channel. We're not we're not that powerful. All, all, all we can do is just say. Um, this is going to be open. This is how you're positioning your product. Um, you still will always have the direct relationship with the sales channels. Great question. Thank you, John. Thank you for coming. <laughs>